If you type Flat Earth into Google, you'd be joining a group of people that have helped to triple the search term over the last couple of years. In fact, a recent YouGov poll found that only around two-thirds of Americans aged between 18 and 24 believe that the Earth is round. Although the idea the Earth is flat has been scientifically discredited, there seems to be a growing belief in the conspiracy theory. And it's getting more traction than some of the other conspiracies out there, like chemtrails, which proposes that a plane's long-lasting condensation trail is actually made up of chemical or biological agent. Interest in most of these other far-fetched theories remains stable, but the Flat Earth movement is growing particularly in America, and it has some high-profile supporters, from basketball players to musicians, rappers to TV hosts, a number of celebrities are jumping on the Flat Earth bandwagon. So what's causing a renewed interest in something that's been scientifically disproven for the past 2,000 years or more? What does it say about social media, and how did we actually establish that the world is round in the first place? Once upon a time, it made sense for people to believe that the Earth was flat, says University of Melbourne cartographer Ch. Andrew Gysia. Ships would sail off toward the horizon and often never return, and those people left behind didn't really have access to information outside of their communities. Their view was egocentric and geocentric. They lived in a village that was the center of their existence, she says. The further away from the village they traveled, the more hostile the environment became. Greek philosophers established that the Earth was round as far back as the 3rd century BC, but it wasn't until the 15th century that it became commonly accepted. The first scientific estimates of the Earth's circumference were made by the Greek mathematician and geographer Eratosthenes in 240 BC. He noted that on the 21st of June that year, in a town called Cyane near modern day Aswan, the reflection of the sun could be seen in a deep well, meaning that it was directly overhead. But in Alexandria, around 800 kilometers away and almost directly north of Cyane, at noon on the same day, the angle of the sun was about 7 degrees or 1 50th of a circle. If the earth was actually flat, the angle would be identical in both places. From this, he concluded that the circumference of the earth must be 50 times the distance between Cyane and Alex and Rhea, Ms. Jayasui adds. This gave him a figure that was very close to the actual circumference as we know it now. In 150 AD, Ptolemy's treatise Geographiel laid out a revolutionary system of assigning coordinates, expressed in degrees of latitude and longitude, to location around the world. The mathematician and astronomer assigned these coordinates to more than 8,000 places across the known world. Even though many of the measurements weren't accurate, Ptolemy's concept of global mapping coordinates used to this day was based on the theory that the Earth was and is, indeed, round. Although Ptolemy's original map didn't survive, the text was rediscovered around 1300 AD and cartographers were able to recreate the map, says Ms. Jayasuya. As well as observations of the sun and its shadows, Ms. Jayasuya says many scientists throughout history continue to gather observations and evidence that the Earth is spherical including that we see the top of a ship's mast coming into port and not the entire ship, that all other planets and celestial objects are spheres that during a lunar eclipse, the Earth's shadow on the moon is curved so why, despite overwhelming scientific evidence that the Earth is an oblate spheroid, a sphere that squashed at its poles and swollen at the equator, is the Flat Earth movement gaining traction in the 21st century. Well, in part, according to School of Culture and Communication lecturer Dr. Jennifer Beckett, it's due to a general shift towards populism and a distrust in the views of experts in the mainstream media. It's really about the power of knowledge, and that increasing distrust in what we once considered to be the gatekeepers of knowledge like academics, scientific agencies, or the government, Dr. Beckett says. 
In this kind of environment, it becomes really easy for one's fringe views to gain traction. You get a bunch of people around you who are constantly reaffirming your belief. D.R. Beckett also notes that the burgeoning movement speaks to how so-called social media influencers can now hold more sway than an expert in the field. That's often because they tend to be better storytellers, D.R. Beckett says. And there's an element of authenticity there people naively think, oh, they're a real person, so it must be true. D.R. Beckett notes that the Flat Earth community uses various social media platforms in distinct, overlapping ways in order to create a kind of ecosystem around their beliefs. YouTube becomes a content hub. Facebook becomes an administrative one-stop shop for that hub, and Twitter continually pushing out the messaging, she says, likening YouTube to a sort of alternative documentary channel for Flat Earthers. It's a really interesting beast. They can have their daily or weekly TV show in the same way that we go to David Attenborough. It's a more powerful social media tool than Facebook or Twitter because it's a high-context platform. D.R. Beckett says, where users can stream themselves with an immediacy and intimacy that's lacking from text or image-based platforms. It's kind of like feeling like you have direct access to David Attenborough after watching one of his documentaries. Being able to have a conversation with him then have him respond in the next episode to your concerns or your question. And unlike TV, on YouTube you can go searching for videos by people who agree with your view of the world. Or in this case, the Earth. D.R. Beckett says that as we increasingly rely on social media for entertainment, we are becoming effect addicts looking for the next hit of anger, happiness or other intense emotions. And it's very easy for misinformation to circulate in this environment. Many Flat Earthers endorse the idea that the UN logo is actually a Flat Earth map, for example. But Ms. Jayasriya adds its appearance is the result of a way of projecting O3DF sphere onto a 2D plane. Because there's no perfect way to project O3DF sphere onto a 2D surface, cartographers produce maps using different projections for different uses. The UN logo is a particular projection centered on the North Pole. So, the question remains, why is this a theory that still persists in 2018 in the face of science and even photographic evidence? Well, it also comes back to thinking critically about information that's out there, particularly online. Look, flat earthers are actually employing Cartesian doubt. This is a philosophical idea that the world outside the self is subject to uncertainty. D.R. Beckett says, referring to a method of skeptical thinking popularized by Byron A. Descartes, the French philosopher, mathematician, and scientist. But, I'd say the best way to do your research on whether a story is correct is to actually go to the mainstream media, to go to those scientific agencies and see what they're saying. Academics are academics not because they're trying to pull the wool over people's eyes, but because we spend a lot of time training and thinking deeply about these issues, says D.R. Beckett. You know, a lot of time, work and effort has gone into perpetuating the notion that the Earth is a globe. Perhaps, that's a sign that it is. No one knows how many Flat Earth believers are out there, according to Smithsonian Magazine. Membership in the Flat Earth Society, founded in 1956, once reached 3,500 people. Today, the Society claims more than 500 members on its roster. As inconceivable as their belief system seems, it doesn't really surprise experts. Karen Douglas, a psychologist at the University of Kent in the United Kingdom who studies the psychology of conspiracy theories, says Flat Earthers' beliefs cohere with those of other conspiracy theorists she has studied. It seems to me that these people do generally believe that the Earth is flat. I'm not seeing anything that sounds as if they're just putting that idea out there for any other reason, Douglas told Live Science. She said all conspiracy theories share a basic thrust. They present an alternative theory about an important issue or event. 
and construct an often vague explanation for why someone is covering up that true version of events. However, flat earthers don't fit entirely snugly in this general picture. Most conspiracy theorists adopt many fringe theories, even ones that contradict each other. Meanwhile, flat earthers' only hang up is the shape of the earth. If they were like other conspiracy theorists, they should be exhibiting a tendency toward a lot of magical thinking, such as believing in UFOs, ESP, ghosts, the devil, or other unseen, intentional forces. It doesn't sound like they do, which makes them very anomalous relative to most Americans who believe in conspiracy theories. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to watch other best videos that we made for you. Thank you.